Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're not going to talk about math. We're going to talk about saving the world. We're solving problems. Um, might be a little bit related to math, somewhat, but uh, we are doing problem solving today. We're saving the world one problem at a time. But they are math problems. So if you're excited about something other than math, then I'm sorry. All right. So there's basically five steps to solving any kind of math problem. Um, some people condense these down into you know four steps, but basically this is what you're going to do. You're going to find what you're looking for. This is often call, kind called the identify step or the find step or the um, usually this is the point where you take out your highlighters and kind of highlight the question. What exactly is this telling me? What, what are we looking for? Then when you strategize, this is when you decide what is it you don't know? What is it that you're told and what is it that you don't know? Again, you can do this partially with a highlighter. Highlight the things you do know. Tell me what you don't know. And what you don't know in pre-algebra and Algebra 1 classes, we're going to give a variable. So for example, if I don't know the distance, I'll call that D and say, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the distance. What don't I know? I don't know the distance, so I'm going to call it D. All right. Then you set up an equation. You basically set up a mathematical situation that looks like what it is you're looking for. And then you solve the equation, state what the solution is, and then in the final step we check whether your answer makes any sense. Um, usually you can do this using what we call an inverse operation. If you added to get the answer, you could subtract to find out if the answer is correct. If you multiplied to get the answer, you can divide. The inverse or the opposite operation is usually the way you would check mathematically. And then you just look at the question and say, does that actually make sense? Let me show you a quick example of that. Mr. Buffington traveled on foot from the capital of New York to the capital of California in three hours. How quickly was he moving? So I'm going to go through the steps and show you kind of the process for solving this question. First off, I'm going to identify what is it that I'm looking for. I would grab my highlighter and read through this question. Mr. Buffington traveled on foot. That part's not really all that important. I don't really care that Mr. Buffington traveled on foot, so I could cross that off. Okay? Um, I'm going to continue. Look, he traveled from the capital of New York to the capital of California in three hours. That information is important. How quickly was he moving? Now that is what I'm looking for. That's what it is that I'm actually trying to solve. So at the end of the day, if I can't answer that question, then I've basically wasted my time. So that's the question I'm looking to solve. How quickly was he moving? How quickly was Mr. Buffington running or walking? All right. So I'm going to highlight that. And for the rest of the slides, I'm going to keep that highlighted as part of my identify. What is it I'm looking for? I'm looking for how quickly he was, Mr. Buffington was moving. All right. Now I'm going to strategize. What do I know and what don't I know? Again, I can grab that um, highlighter. I know that I made that distance in three hours. So what you would typically do is you would label that down here. You would say, what do I know? I know the time is equal to three hours. But the distance, that I don't know. I'm not really told the distance because um, I was told where I was going, but I wasn't really told that amount. And then how quickly was I moving? That we'll call the rate or the speed. And that I have completely no idea. So what I need to do is to first off calculate the distance between Albany, New York, that's the capital of New York State, and Sacramento, California, the capital of California. And I'm going to calculate that distance. Then I'll have my distance. I know my time is three hours. I don't know how fast he's going. That's what I'm looking for. All right. So I Googled it. It was 2,845 miles from Albany to Sacramento. So that is my distance. Now I have my distance. I know my time is three hours. I don't know how quickly I was moving. So now my strate strategy of setting up what exactly do I not know, I'm set. Now I'm into the setup phase. I have those three variables. The rate is how fast I'm moving. The distance is how far I'm going. And the time is how long it takes. 
So my setup of my equation is going to look like this. Now, if you've never heard of the, the rate distance time equation, that's okay. But there's a, a distance rate time equation that looks like this. The distance is equal to the rate times the time. Dirt. Um, you can also think of it as like if you're talking about a rate or a speed, you always talk about miles per hour. So my rate is the distance, miles, divided by the time, hours. All right, miles per hour. That's all we're doing. We're saying this equation. Every time we talk about how fast we're driving, we're saying the distance rate time equation in this way. This is my related equation. Rate is equal to the distance divided by the time. That's exactly what that is. So we're going to use that equation. When you're talking about distance, rate, and time, you use the distance rate time equation. So I'm going to get that set up. Rate is equal to the distance divided by the time. And I'm going to substitute in the pieces of information that I know. So my rate, or how fast I'm going, is what I don't know. The distance we determined by Googling was 2,845 miles. The time is three hours. So I'm going to substitute those values right into the equation and solve by using my calculator. I'm going to pull out my calculator. 2,845 divided by 3 is 948.3 miles per hour. That's how fast I'm going. So I've solved the equation. I identified what it was I was looking for. I strategized how I was going to solve it. I named any unknown variables. I set up my equation. I solved my equation. I have one step left, and that is to say, does this make any sense? Well, before I do my check and say, does it make any sense, I can do a mathematical check using what I said before, the inverse operation. So I know that my rate is 2,845 divided by 3. If I wanted to check, I could use my distance equation. The distance is equal to the rate times the time. So I can plug those values in, 2,845. The rate that I discovered, 948.3. And the time of three hours. And when I solve that mathematically, I plug that into my calculator, 948.3 times the three hours, and I get 2,844.9, which is pretty close with this. This is actually a repeating decimal, um, so that's fine. That's accurate enough for our counting. And so I've done a mathematical check using inverse operations. Now I just need to do kind of a common sense check. Mr. Buffington, did he really travel on foot from the capital of New York to the capital of California? Does that make sense? Absolutely it does, because Mr. Buffington, as you can see, my face is right there, is really Superman. Now, you need to keep this a secret, okay? My secret identity cannot be revealed, because then I wouldn't be able to save people anymore. So I hope that's been helpful for you, the steps of solving the problem. I'm going to put a link for a recording down here. So you can actually see another video of a different problem that was solved using these same five steps. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.